Welcome everyone. I will go ahead and share my screen. We are coming to you from all different parts of the country, the world today, I should say. Kate, tell us where you're coming from. Am I the, the farthest one? I don't know where far from, but I'm coming from Toronto, Canada. So the international Toronto. Community. In the house. I love it. Okay. And Matt, I think you're next farthest from, from me. Yes. Dallas, Texas. In case it wasn't obvious. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, I'm not in downtown Dallas, uh, just a little north of Dallas. But yeah, I'm in Dallas. Excellent. And Rory, I know that you are near me yes, in town. I could right. shout across the hill and you would be able to hear me, right? Exactly, yes. Just on the other side of the city from you. Nice to be here today. <clears throat> thank you. Thank you. We'll do, we'll do complete introductions when we go ahead and get started, but very excited to uh, get us all together today, perhaps the last full week before Thanksgiving here in the U.S. I know you've already had your Canadian Thanksgiving, Kate, so... But, um, you know, we look forward to your Thanksgiving um, almost as much, if not more, than ours because it's the quietest days in the office of the whole year. So every <laughs> Canadian is like, oh, you have Thanksgiving. Like, we might pop out on Friday to shop, but we like relish the slow Thursday. Mm. Is Black Friday a thing in your world? Oh, yeah. 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 That is, that is ubiquitous, I guess. Yes, yes. Good stuff. Good, good, good. All right. Well, um, super. Well, I think I'm going to go ahead and dive in and get started here. So thank you everyone for joining us today. We are here for another round of the Traxo webinar series. And today we're going to be talking about off-channel bookings and the impact on duty of care. So uh, we've got today for you perspective from buyers and solution providers, as well as uh, international SOS, of course. And we're going to give you a practical um, a practical piece of information, really a tool to put in your toolkit. And so without further ado, I'm going to dive in here. Really, this webinar was today's topic was born out of last month's uh, session where we talked about our recently published travel managers toolkit. And we had buyers uh, join us for that discussion. And we heard about their priorities for their travel programs and how they are addressing those priorities within their travel program. And um, certainly managing all of their spend and having full visibility was a topic and they came up in that, in that session. So we wanted to really take a deep dive today and talk about how uh, we here at Traxo and our uh, longtime partner, International SOS, are, are working together to help you solve that problem within your travel program. So um, we've got more resources here in our resource center. And um, so you can certainly access that recording and, and, um, and the other resources there. But before I get into the meat of the matter today, just a couple of housekeeping items. So this, this uh, webinar is being recorded and you'll have access to it in our resource center and as well as all of our webinar uh, webinars in our webinar series. Um, the other thing is that we will be having discussion, but as questions come up, please put them in the chat here and we will address them uh, at the end of the call where we've left time for Q&A. So I want to kick it off by introducing my esteemed panelists here today. So Kate King, I'm gonna hand it over to you to introduce yourself and Rory. Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Kate. I lead our Global Travel Partnerships Program at International SOS. Thank you. Rory. Hi, everyone. Rory Gallagher, Digital, Digital Solutions Advisor with International SOS, uh, based in the Bay Area and supporting uh, our clients and prospects uh, with all digital solutions. Fantastic. Super. Rebecca Sheehan, I'm also here in the San Francisco Bay Area. I lead our strategic partnerships here at Traxo, and I'd like to hand it over to my colleague, Matt. Hey, everyone. Uh, so I'm Matt Griffin. I'm the CPO and CIO at Traxo, and in my role, I uh, help our uh, uh, development teams and design teams and support teams uh, deliver great products uh, for our customers. Super. All right, let's dive in. 
Okay, so uh, for the title of this webinar, I, I riffed off of this old PSA announcement. For those of you that are old enough to remember it, it used to run before the 10 o'clock news and ask, do you know where your children are? So I thought that was really relevant in today's corporate travel space because knowing where all of your travelers are is, is challenging, but it's also critically important to making sure that you're successfully managing your travel program. So I thought I would uh, just riff off that for a bit. But first, I would like to ask a poll question. And so, uh, Lacey, I think um, you, if you are the one that kicks off the poll question, or is that me? Uh, you can chime in and tell me. But I want to ask the audience, um, what is your off-channel uh, percentage? How, how much uh, leakage, as some call it, um, how much off-channel uh, spend do you have that represents um, in part of your travel program? And I see the results are coming in. So I'm going to give everybody uh, just a few more seconds to fill that out. Um, what we hear uh, is that overall industry-wide, it's about 40%. And certainly that is usually highest in the hotel space, but we're starting to see that climb as well on the airline space with efforts like NDC and more supplier direct bookings. So I'm just looking at the results here and it looks like there's a mix. We have about 30, gosh, 36% of folks don't know uh, what their off-channel spend is, which is really interesting. Um, and then from there, we've got um, it, it pretty much an even split between under 10%, 10 to 30% and over 30%. And so, uh, you know, what I'd like to just add here is that um, often, sometimes people can say, you know, I, I don't know what my off-channel spend is, or I don't have off-channel spend. And so I'm going to give you a couple scenarios. Um, you know, it's not always your rogue travelers that are the ones that are saying, eh, forget it, I'm going to go off-channel. Um, there's often very good reason why your travelers have to book off-channel. So um, first tip off is if your finance team is telling you that your expense travel data does not match with your TMC data, you absolutely have off-channel spend, off-channel bookings. Um, another scenario would be where you have travelers that have to attend a conference and they are going and they must book that, that conference hotel directly. And so that is a perfectly a reasonable reason why they would have to book direct with the hotel and be off-channel. Um, another reason may be they're on client business where the client would like them to uh, book at the client rate. And then another, the last scenario I'll give, and I know, Kate, you've got some commentary on this, is, um, is if you're booking a mode of transportation, say rail, which is becoming more popular these days with all of the sustainability initiatives. And sometimes, uh, you know, not all rail is available in the GDS. Um, or you may be in a particular region where a particular airline is not in the GDS. Think of Africa or, or other areas of the world. So it's often, you know, there can be um, good reason why, um, why people are booking off channel. Kate, do you have any thoughts on that you want to add? Yeah, I know. I mean, I see that all the time. And I think I think you covered most of the examples, Rebecca, but there's always there's always going to be reasons. I mean, uh, new hires or unprofiled travelers could be another example, um, groups and um, groups that are traveling together. But I think the point is that there will always be exceptions. There's always going to be people who aren't booking through your preferred channel or your TMC. And that's OK. It's just really about how to get that information into whatever tracking tool you use. It doesn't mean that the visibility has to be lost. Um, here at International SOS, we offer lots of different ways for our clients to get that trip data into their tracking tool. Um, there's manual entry methods, there's upload options, we have SFTP sites, um, and of course, Traxo. A lot of our clients use, use Traxo for that purpose as well. So it's, it's very solvable, I think. Excellent. Thank you for all of that. Okay, great. So we're going to pop back in here. Um, so uh, let's see. Great. All right. So, you know, off-channel bookings, we think of them as invisible spend. And uh, so imagine that you have 40% leakage, the industry average. So you've got 60% of your travel data. That is, is what we call known. And then 40% of that is invisible. 
And, you know, what that is impacting is really all of your program initiatives. So it's impacting your ability uh, to, to know where all of your travelers are, location awareness. It's impacting your ability to communicate with those travelers. It's impacting your ability to have visibility into that total spend and uh, really be able to manage that spend proactively. It's certainly impacting your ability to measure your carbon footprint and uh, also impact the traveler experience. So in many ways, this invisible spend is, is really uh, you know, impacting your entire program. And what we would say is you know, it's not something to, um, to ignore. It's, it's super important. It's also really not always a reflection of a failure in policy or a, a failure of any you know, system that you may be using. Um, it, it, it's happening. And really, the, the important thing to do is gain visibility into it and, and have that, that visibility and use it to your advantage. And we'll talk a bit uh, later about how to, to really use it to your advantage. Certainly today, we're going to talk about using it to your advantage for, for duty of care. So with that, Kate, I'm going to turn it over to you to talk about the priorities that you hear from your clients and prospects with regard to travel risk management. Yeah, of course. I mean, obviously at International SOS, all of our clients are here for a reason. So travel risk management um, is super important for lots of reasons, all the reasons, um, depending on where the business is located, there's compliance to different regulations that's required. Um, it could be duty of care, it could be something else. Um, now, a lot of organizations globally are looking to ISO 31030 travel risk management guidance as sort of a global standard to try to um, adhere to or reach to. And then of course there's, I mean, there's, you care about your people, you care about your employees. I don't think it's a difficult, um, a difficult thing for most companies to do to just sort of know intuitively we need to keep track of people. We need to make sure that when we're sending them out on business, whatever it is, whatever type of assignment it is, that they're safe. And I think this is a good point just to highlight. And I always add this because it's, it's it's a funny misnomer that can sort of drive me crazy sometimes. <laughs> but just to be clear, when we talk about duty of care, say we're not just talking about tracking. Um, the whole duty of care travel risk management process really starts well, well, well before tracking. If it's a continuum, it's, I feel like travel tracking is maybe like three fourths of the way in. But the way that your organizations prepare your travelers, the vendors that you choose, like the hotels and the air carriers that you select, uh, the intelligence that you follow, you've put all of those things in place for a reason to ensure that safe journey. And they make up a lot of the mis risk mitigation too. So I think finding people in the event of an incident is absolutely critical, but, but almost, I don't want to say a last resort, but just a little bit further on in the journey. And there's a lot that you all are doing in advance of that to really reduce the, reduce the incidents maybe of even of needing to, to locate a traveler in an event. Does that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. Thank you for all that. Excellent. Well, um, um, uh, here's some perspective from a buyer. So we had uh, Sarah Hayden from ZS on our webinar last month, and she talks about duty of care as really a corporate responsibility. So how critically important it is. It's a top priority for her program and how she is working with us here at Traxo to gain visibility into 99.7% uh, of her uh, of her spend so that she is aware of um, where she's got holes in her program and then also where her people are. So um, very helpful to get that buyer perspective. So um, we're going to switch gears and I talked about giving you some practical uh, advice here today. And uh, that was another thing that came up in the webinar last time is the advice that um, that our buyers gave was be curious and learning. And so this is meant to, uh, to, to uh, educate you about this. So we have partnered for a long time with International SOS and we here at Traxo power the forward your itinerary feature within the program. Um, so within your solution. So you are able to manually have your travelers manually forward in booking confirmation emails so that International SOS has awareness of those trips and is able to do what they do so well. We also now have our Traxo Connect product that is fully integrated with International SOS. And this is an auto uh, automated feature. 
and it enables you to sort of be hands off, not introduce any change management for your travelers. And, you know, what we're finding is that, um, you know, as, as the world has become more automated and the expectation to use technology to your benefit, um, we have come together with, uh, with International SOS and are offering this uh, seamless integration. And it really enables you to deliver in real time your bookings, whether they are on channel or off channel to International SOS. So we're going to, I'll just give you a little bit of a, a preview on that. So really, in other words, it enables you to take bookings regardless of the booking source. And uh, through our Tracks of Connect product, we are able to pull those in, structure, normalize that data, and then ship it downstream to any solution provider that you are working with. Um, chiefly International SOS we see, um, but we also have partners that we deliver data to in the sustainability, business intelligence, um, expense, all the different uh, categories uh, that you may be working with. And really the last thing I want to bring up is that, that this visibility empowers you beyond uh, managing duty of care. It really enables you to negotiate better vendor rates. You're able to know all where all of your spend is, where all of um, your actuals are with a given hotel, with a given airline. Um, you can increase hotel attachment because you're able to see where all of your travelers are staying. It may even open your eyes to hotels that your travelers are staying in that aren't part of your program that should be in your program. Um, it enables you to increase compliance, knowing who, who's booking in program, booking out of program, and um, then really operate more proactively. Rather than waiting for expense data to come, you're able to get uh, post-booking pre-trip data and enabling you to have that advanced view and proactively communicate with your travelers. So lots of benefits there by um, harnessing your off-channel bookings. And so I am going to um, just pause for a moment. Kate, if you have anything to add, just you know, wave to me. If not, I will turn it over to Matt and Rory to get into uh, a demonstration so that they can show you this in, in black and white or live, I should say. Okay, great. I will stop sharing and turn it over to you, Matt Griffin. Awesome. Bring cool. it to life Thank for you. us. Thank you. Cool. Uh, I'll share my screen in just a sec, but uh, for our demo today, we're going to focus on a scenario of a conference. Uh, so uh, as you uh, heard from Rebecca, conferences can be a big uh, travel blind spot for companies, impacting their overall uh, oversight uh, for both spend as well as our topic today employee risk. Kind of back to that important question that Rebecca posed at the top of the session. Do you know where your travelers are? Uh, so the uh, event uh, we are going to focus on uh, in this scenario is a uh, conference in Bogota, Colombia. Uh, so hopefully you all can see my screen. Uh, speak up if you can't. Cool. Uh, so WOBI is an international organization that's holding their next annual or flagship event in Bogota. Uh, thousands of people will be attending this event. These are business leaders from nonprofits, just uh, uh, private sector, uh, government organizations. They're going to fill the main theater, go to all the sessions, have a great time at this event. Uh, so um, when traveling to conferences, most people like these people shown here uh, likely book their air through their agency. Uh, lodging, though, is definitely a different story and frequently, frequently does not go through the agency. Uh, for um, some of those reasons that Rebecca mentioned earlier. Uh, I, I need to access the conference rate. Um, I have a preference to stay near the event uh, for transportation or to network or to be social with attendees uh, or compression. And there's just no properties available through my agency for this event. And it's not just the big mega events like Salesforce or Amazon Web Services in Las Vegas. Uh, all kinds of events experience this. Uh, so let's jump back to our uh, scenario of uh, this event happening in Bogota, uh, Colombia. So here is a map of the event. It's located here on the top right uh, with this uh, marker here. And here is the airport. So if I flew into this event and I purchased the air through the agency, the only information that my company would know about where am I is relative to right here. But the venue is very far away from this particular event. So that's that's kind of a problem. Uh, but it kind of the next kind of thing, question is, OK, uh, the venue is over here. Where do I want to stay? So let's look at hotel options for this area. 
really the only hotel, and this is the results from booking.com. Uh, so we're seeing a lot of properties here. I'm focusing on three and four star properties. Uh, there are very few options nearby. All the other hotels are really close to clustered here, which I suppose is a more commercial district uh, in, in Bogota. I've never been to Bogota. Uh, so I, let's say I'm the traveler. I really wanna to go to this event. I wanna stay nearby. This is definitely uh, the hotel for me right up here at the top of the screen. So I booked it. Uh, so even though I chose the closest property, I'm still 10 to 15 minutes away by taxi to and from the venue. And that in itself is risk. Uh, you know, travelers getting into taxis, uh, traversing a city 10 to 15 minutes, encountering traffic here and there. Um, they're not right across the street from the, the, from the venue. Uh, so just more important reasons why uh, it's uh, critical for companies to know where people are staying and especially their duty of care and risk management partners. Uh, to know where they're staying. In this case, uh, for most companies that don't have tracks, though, this would be a risky situation. Uh, the only information that they have is this employee uh, is going to be uh, at the airport, you know, for uh, you know, relative to when they are arriving and, and departing this this city. But in this scenario, the company has Traxo, and they use Traxo to manage their travel program, and they have the international SOS integration enabled from our marketplace. So this company does not have that same amount of risk. And let me show you how it works. Uh, so first thing is um, uh, the travel, uh, Traxo Travel Management Service has three core pillars that enable the company and their trusted partners to keep this traveler safe. First thing is we have comprehensive detection uh, of travel events. So solutions from agencies and other, uh, and other sellers of travel, they only include the bookings that they sell. Uh, and that's a problem in this scenario because there's two places where this traveler purchased. Uh, so let's jump to our uh, uh, Traxo application and I'll show you uh, what I'm talking about here. Traxo, on their hand, imports bookings uh, from any place where the, the, they're purchased, agency or non-agency. Uh, we have patented technology that enables us to automatically detect these bookings immediately after purchase as soon as the traveler clicks buy and gather that comprehensive information. And here we can show it to our customers through our Traxo application uh, once they sign in, uh, in both views representing uh, the agency and non-agency views. So here uh, I'm showing just kind of very top level metrics about what's happening. And this is kind of the second pillar of the Traxo service. Uh, we enable travel teams to have a complete view of all the details of all travel purchases conveniently in a single application. Uh, so you don't have to jump around to multiple applications to your airline, airline A, B, and C. Let's say you have multiple travel agencies, travel agency A, travel agency B. Here it's all in one single view for you to see how much are we spending overall through these different channels of agency versus not agency. Where are travelers shopping when they're buying outside of the agency? And then what are they buying uh, when they're buying uh, flights or hotels or cars or rail? Uh, Traxo has it all. So this is kind of the, the top level dashboard view that uh, we have for our customers that enables them to be more productive. So let's kind of drill down uh, a little a little deeper. Uh, so here we can kind of drill down into looking at just lodging itself. And here you can see more of the details of where our travelers staying. In fact, we've color coded the map to indicate agency versus non agency or TMC non TMC with blue representing the non TMC activity. And the travel team can drill down into the specifics to see, oh, here's this hotel. This is uh, from December 9th to December 13th at the Fairfield Inn, four nights, and it cost this much. And it was purchased on Marriott.com. So lots of great details. And then they can jump and see, oh, this booking was purchased on Navon uh, for this courtyard Marriott. So all within the same view, you can compare agency and non-agency, and you have some geographic awareness to know where is this traveler in the city, where are they staying to help your internal uh, uh, risk teams? In the case of this uh, booking.com hotel booking in Bogota, uh, so here's the hotel here purchased uh, on booking.com. Uh, this kind of gives you an indication of what are we able to capture? Immediately after purchase, Traxo captures data, a lot of data about this booking, the hotel name, the address, dates and times of travel, uh, confirmation numbers, 
uh, total cost as well as you know, in, in the original currency, uh, as well as we convert everything to US, USD to save everyone time uh, and be able to compare apples to apples. Uh, so lots of great information uh, available. Uh, we import this very same information, whether it's the agency bookings or non-agency bookings. So again, through our application, you can compare both worlds and, and see what uh, activity looks like through no matter the booking channel. Um, and uh, that applies to air, hotel, car, rail, and even ride sharing. So that brings us to the third pillar of Traxo, and that is our marketplace. Uh, Traxo customers have access to a growing menu of connected services and expense management uh, in um, uh, price assurance, business intelligence, sustainability tracking, and more. Uh, through our marketplace link, in the case of this scenario with Inasha SOS, customers are able to maximize their full duty of care services so all travelers can have safer experiences while they're on the road. In this case, as soon as Traxo acquired information about this booking.com reservation, we sent a copy of that data to Inasha SOS uh, through our integration so they can provide the best possible safety oversight for this traveler. So let's see what does that look like for on the ISOS side. So Rory, I'm gonna hand it off to you to show uh, uh, what you're gonna share, share today. Great, thank you so much, Matt. Uh, so what I'm gonna do now is take you through both uh, how this looks uh, for the traveler, so the traveler journey, and then also uh, on the manager side. And there's really a lot that will happen now that uh, Matt has done the right thing and made his booking and ensured that that's come through into the international SOS environment. So as the traveler, the first thing Matt is going to see is the pre-trip advisory. So you should see my screen now. I'll just hide those uh, floating uh, panels. So in the pre-trip advisory, Matt as the traveler is now going to get a bit of an introduction to uh, the destination he's heading to. So he's off to Colombia. He's going to immediately see uh, the risk readings associated with uh, his destination, both on the medical and security side. And he can take some time to read through all of the great intel from our medical and security teams to help ensure that he's prepared for a safe and successful trip. He can go through all of these topics individually or just focus on the ones that are of concern to him. It moves into the security side of the house and then flows on further down into the traveler facing alerts. As Matt gets closer to his trip departure date, he may start to see more of these alerts coming through via email uh, just to keep him aware of what's happening, uh, where he's headed to. This also copies across to our assistance app. So as a traveler, Matt would have that app downloaded on his phone. And as he uh, moves uh, towards Colombia and uh, starts that trip, any pertinent information about critical events that we're tracking at International SOS will be pushed through to him as a push notification uh, on the mobile device uh, if he has uh, that uh, in his possession. The pre-trip advisory is configured uh, at a client level. So all of our clients have the ability to, to customize these and configure uh, when they're issued uh, and what type of trips would trigger these and also uh, configure the level of content that shows in the pre-trip advisory. So this goes out to Matt. He's now uh, fairly well prepared in writing. If he has some additional questions after reading through all of the information in the pre-trip advisory and our uh, country guides, he can call through to our assistance center and speak with a member of the medical or security team to address any additional concerns, either ahead of travel or once he gets to Bogota. On the manager side, um, and hopefully you can still see my screen. Um, excellent. Uh, on the manager side, this is where it's going to flow through into our tracking solution. I'm using Tracker, which is our legacy uh, and flagship uh, tracking solution. Uh, some of our uh, clients on the call may be familiar with our uh, man manager view program as well, uh, which uh, will also host the travel data. And uh, most of our customers on the call will have heard about uh, our upcoming changes with our platform and moving into quantum um, but definitely reach out to, to myself or your account manager uh, for further questions on that. So now that we're in Tracker, I'm putting on my, my manager hat. And manager is a term I use uh, very widely here. It could be uh, someone who's managing travel, travel safety, employee safety in general, uh, HR, uh, business continuity and resiliency, all those different uh, um, pillars of your, your organization uh, potentially will touch on uh, this travel data. So now in the tracker platform, uh, as an analyst, I'm able to, to come in and quickly search uh, for my people. Uh, so I hear there is a, a situation uh, cropping up in Bogota. So I want to quickly tap in and see my people that are 
uh, currently in uh, Bogota uh, or headed here in, you know, in the next one to seven days. And I see Matt here. I'm able to see his hotel information here as well as all of his employee information, uh, such as line manager details, etc. I see all of his travel information here. And I can even click in to get all known travels. So if I need to see other flights and itinerary information, I can easily find that in here. As it relates to our alerts, I'll also see if Matt is impacted by any critical event that we're managing. So all of our alerts are hosted here. I can quickly come in and search for uh, Bogota again as a keyword and uh, come into our active alerts. Let me just reset that. We go into our alerts for Colombia here, and now I see we have six people potentially impacted, including Matt. And from here, I'm able to start communication initiatives. So it really does give uh, managers uh, a clearer sense of how many people are on the ground when there is a critical event. Um, it also gives that uh, location information around the hotel. So as you're monitoring threats as they come up, um, it's just critical to have uh, that travel information in there. And uh, the partnership with Traxo really ensures that uh, you're capturing all those bookings. Uh, so that's the view from the, uh, the manager side. Uh, and the last piece I'll just touch on is uh, this also ties into our email alerts that go out to the managers. So as we're monitoring those critical events around the world, we'll push out those alerts to the managers showing how many people are potentially impacted uh, in the region. And now that we have Matt's travel data in, he'll be included in those people that are potentially in harm's way. So back over to you, Matt. Excellent, thank you. Uh, cool, let me uh, replace and share. All right, cool. Uh, so hopefully you're seeing the presentation. Uh, thank you. Uh, cool. Uh, so, um, awesome. Thanks, Roy. I appreciate you, uh, you sharing that. It's awesome to see how International SOS really enhances the data that Traxo automatically provides to reduce overall risk and enhance uh, the experience for travelers on the road. Uh, so what have we shown you today in this demo? Uh, so first thing is the Traxo Travel Management Service imports all of your employee booking data, no matter where they purchase, either through your agency or outside your agency. Uh, the second thing is we make you, the travel team, more productive by bringing all of your travel plans into a single view, providing you the best oversight and easy analysis. And then the third thing is Traxo enables you to reduce your risk with our ISOS integration. Uh, after enables, enabling this connection, ISOS can uh, immediately provide more complete services, as you saw, to complete your travelers safe while they're on the road and ensure that your teams have the best possible view of risk around the world. Uh, a few final points is the Traxo Marketplace has over a dozen services. I showed a few um, uh, previously. We have over a dozen services where we can automatically send your comprehensive travel data. These are managed and monitored 24-7, 365 days a year by the Traxo team, uh, as well as updated and improved whenever needed. So these, that is not anything that customers need to worry about whatsoever. This is a managed service. And the last point is setting up a new connection like this International SOS connection. Uh, setting up a new link here uh, between Traxo and International SOS just takes a few minutes. Uh, so, uh, and then from that point forward, you're immediately enabling better and safer travel experiences for your teams. And that's it. Rebecca, Kate, hand it back to y'all. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you, Matt and Rory for the demo. It's always helpful to see things come to life, I think. Uh, excellent. So we have a few more minutes left. We wanted to leave it open for some Q&A. So if you have any questions for any of us uh, covering any of the data that we showed, cover the demo, anything like that, I will keep an eye on the chat um, and see if there are any questions. Let's see. Okay. How can Traxo differentiate between employees booking business versus personal if they use their business email address for the booking? All right, Matt. Uh, so um, it really depends on the company and their view of business versus personal. Some companies view uh, this as, hey, my employee is really important to me, no matter how, for whatever purpose they're traveling. I want uh, them to maximize the resources that us as the company have access to. So. I want them to, to be able to call International SOS if there is an emergency. 
Uh, another scenario is pleasure, and this is something we're seeing a lot more of these days, uh, where, um, like in my scenario, I actually tacked on a few days uh, in Bogota, because I've never been to Bogota, I want to check out the city. Uh, so um, uh, a, a lot of companies these days are increasingly saying the, the leisure component, uh, again, we care about you as a traveler uh, and an employee, we want to make sure you're covered. So, of course, in Russia, SOS should know about this uh, so they can help you out. Uh, and the third thing I'll, I'll share is um, when employees uh, maybe book something uh, leisure outside uh, through an airline.com website or a hotel website or Airbnb, um, those uh, we we're seeing those points of sale often uh, differentiate between uh, personal and you know uh, business or or work profiles. Uh, and that, that even comes down to email addresses, uh, which is a common way that we use to get travel data into our platform. Uh, and so in that respect, travelers are some, sometimes self-selecting uh, and uh, by choosing, I'm booking for personal reasons, uh, that uh, helps the Traxo platform not get that information usually. So that's kind of how I asked to answer that question. Thank you. Appreciate that, Matt. Okay, um, we have another question. Uh, this one's coming in. How do you get the data uh, of off booking? So I could take that question two ways. One is where did we get the stat that we shared earlier? Um, that was a grasp technology stat that we had. Uh, but I think perhaps what uh, Sue's talking about here is how do we actually aggregate and capture the off channel booking? So Matt, I'm um, gonna ask you to just cover that you got yes. it. Um, so Traxo has the widest variety of ways that we can get travel bookings into our platform. Uh, we don't rely on just a single uh, channel to get bookings into our platform because we realize, we realize there's different situations all the time. So uh, first of all, um, any traveler can automatically or can forward their itineraries into their company's account. Um, that's oftentimes used in uh, travel arranging scenarios where whoever booked the reservation on behalf of the traveler would forward it in for the traveler is kind of the final step. Uh, so that's kind of the first way is, is manual forwarding. Uh, the second way is we have integrations with uh, a few airlines uh, where we can get data directly from their four business programs like United and Delta, and that is growing. Um, and the third way is uh, we, uh, this kind of gets to our patented uh, technology in our automatic detection. So uh, our technology can be implemented within the corporate email server in collaboration with the company's IT department to train their email server to know what incoming messages are most likely to be travel. And uh, for those messages, they're automatically sent to, a copy of them are, is automatically sent to your company's private Traxo account where we do all of our all of our parsing. This is an area where we continue to invest as Traxo in expanding the ways and further diversifying the ways that we can get travel data into our platform. So one thing that we're uh, in beta testing right now is whenever you book a group reservation for a really large hotel, a, ho a really large event, and you negotiated the rates uh, uh, with the property directly and you have a spreadsheet. Uh, so uh, this beta right now, we can import that entire spreadsheet of 100, 200, 1,000, 2,000 hotel reservations into your Traxo account. And then all of the, it, it becomes available in our application. So your travel team can see all everyone's itinerary and plans um, married right together with the flight bookings that they're purchasing. And it will automatically flow to International SOS. So a really huge time saver. Just as long as you get that spreadsheet into your Traxo account, uh, we do the rest. And so um, that's just an example of how we're further diversifying and expanding how we can get travel data into Traxo accounts. Thank you, Matt. Okay, more and more questions coming for you. So um, in the last five minutes, okay, what data is used to connect bookings to specific companies? Name, email, other info? As an example, how do I know Joe Smith is the Joe Smith that works for my company versus another Joe Smith? Yeah, so when we set up these uh, uh, integrations, um, we, we configure them in a way where the, in, the data only goes into your own company account. Uh, so that's never an issue. Um, 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 I also oversee all of our information security. Uh, and so this is a concern definitely of kind of the separation of customers. Uh, and so that's never an issue. Um, we, we 
specifically designed our service where um, travel data will never move across companies in that scenario. Super. Uh, continuing, what kind of data integrations do you require from your customers to use your services? The answer uh, is none. Yeah, customers can just start out with uh, manual forwarding. That's the mm -hmm. simplest thing to do. Um, the challenge with that is you've got to get everyone to do it. And that's really where um, customers that might start out with manual forwarding quickly realize, I want, there's something I'm missing, well, I'm missing a lot of information uh, still, and I need to implement the automatic detection. I love all the charts and visuals that Trexo gives me and the data that they're able to extract from manually forwarded stuff. I just want a lot more of it. And I need a lot more of it because I know it's happening. And so moving from manual forwarding to automatic detection is a natural evolution of a customer in, in our platform. Super. All right, we have a question for international SOS here. Um, let's see here. Um, the questions keep coming in. So this one is, um, does the traveler get the pre-travel guidance from international SOS as soon as they book the hotel and flight? So I know we can answer this, but Rory may want to chime in. Yeah, I could take this one. Thanks. So um, it really depends uh, client by client. Uh, most of our customers elect to send the free trip advisory for all international trips uh, as soon as we receive that booking. Uh, so as soon as that comes across into our system from Traxo, which is almost immediate uh, these days, um, the pre-trip advisory will uh, will trigger out. Some of our customers elect to send the pre-trip advisory at different times, so maybe uh, 10 days before departure so that it's fresh in the traveler's mind, especially for people who book well in advance. And other customers of ours may uh, include different configurations, such as only sending pre-trip advisories every 90 days for low risk or uh, only sending for, for high and extreme risk. So it really depends at the customer level, but uh, essentially to answer the question, uh, as soon as we receive that booking, that will be triggered. And uh, what we can share is that when uh, the traveler makes the booking, the confirmation comes into their email inbox. Um, if they're using our auto capture uh, functionality, then that will automatically go over within 10 seconds over to International SOS. So it is, it is, it is real time. Okay, um, let's see here. I have a question about, is the forwarding spreadsheet of conference option available if your company only uses manual forwarding? And I would say, um, Matt, I'll, yeah, I'll once, you answer that once one. Once we move to general availability, uh, it'll be just another way that companies can get their travel data into their Traxo account uh, to be more productive in how they manage their travel program and to ensure that their trusted partners get access to that data immediately. And and to do that, you would have, you would uh, have, have opted for Traxo beyond manual forwarding, Traxo's direct service, the Traxo Connect product. Yes, just to make that part clear. of our Traxo Connect yes. offering. Exactly, exactly. Yes, okay, great. Question, have you encountered any privacy or GDPR concerns with collecting people's data? This is a great question. Thank you for asking it. Always comes up, great question. Y'all have really great questions, by the way. Um, yeah, this always comes up. Um, I'm involved in all the InfoSec requests and conversations with customers. Uh, and so this is always on everyone's list. Uh, yes, Traxo fully abides by GDPR require requirements uh, and rights. Um, if you want more information, just go to traxo.com slash security. And I think we also have an EU focused page that really focuses on GDPR, for example. Just go down to our footer uh, on our website and you can find more information about that EU privacy uh, content. Super, thank you so much. Okay, I know we're getting down to the wire here. Uh, let's see, um, outside of manual forwarding, which we already do, what information from our company do you need from us? Um, I'm going to say, if you're talking about what more information you need to be able to take advantage of the auto capture, I would say that um, it is really just signing up as a direct Traxo customer, and then that entitles you to the, the uh, broader, the, the um, expanded services that we offer, auto capture, the ability to come onto our platform and see those insights that, that Matt shared, and then also be able to send the data beyond international SOS to other endpoints. So um, hopefully that's what that question meant. And let me see if I have anything else that we can cover. Um, 
Okay, there was, oh yeah, one last thing. How do you get business travel bookings if the employee is using their personal email? So that's another scenario where forwarding it in uh, is often uh, the, uh, the path that the traveler needs to follow. Um, typically, you know, uh, that they learn quickly, gosh, this is a whole lot easier if I just, when I make the booking, I type in my work email address instead of my personal email address. Uh, and so uh, that's kind of what we observe with our customers, especially when you add an incentive of um, you have an, ex a, an expense management integration turned on in your Traxo account. And if Traxo automatically detected that booking, it's a magical experience that the next thing that the traveler sees is a drafted expense report or at least a receipt showing up in their expense management solution, as well as we're starting to receive notifications from International SOS to get them ready for their trip. So um, travelers start to experience the magic once they start uh, booking with their work email address and letting the automation really kick in for their benefit. Okay, excellent. So there are a couple more questions, Matt, if you could just type the answers in there, because I just want to wrap up. We are at time. Yeah. I want to keep everybody on time. So I'm going to just to share two last slides here. First of all, I want to thank everybody for coming today. And um, so just a couple quick takeaways. So really gain visibility into your invisible spend. We had over 35% of the audience here that said they don't know what their invisible spend is. So um, there are ways to gain visibility through Traxo. So, so do that. Um, that will help you ensure you've got 100% coverage. And then there are other areas, as we explained, that you, this, this complete booking data set will benefit you. And so if you want to learn more, please reach out to your International SOS Client Manager, or you can visit the Traxo Marketplace, the uh, International SOS uh, page, and there's a quick form that you can fill out, and we will be happy to get in touch with you. This presentation will be made available to you. We will also share the recording. Again, thank you for joining us. Thank you to my esteemed panelists. Um, really uh, appreciate everyone's time today. Take care, everyone.